Are you ready? We got to hear mic. I'm ready. <laughs> when was the last time you were on? Oh, paranorm, paranorm, paranorm. <laughs> I don't even want to say it. It was, it was a scary time. It was so scary for you. You can't even acknowledge it. Um, actually, honestly, that was probably one of my favorite episodes. It was terrifying. Did I tell you what happened here after? Mm-mm. I haven't even told you. I have it on video too. So like it's 100% real. But me and my dad were recording an episode and all of a sudden, all of the power in the room stays on, like the podcast recording equipment stays on, our mics stay on, the ring lights stay on, everything's good. The room light shuts off and starts flickering back and forth. And I literally stop and I look and I go, they're here. Mm. I go, fuck. I, I said something to my dad. I was like, maybe our house is haunted. <laughs> and he literally like looks at me and he goes, that was weird. Anyways, and I'm like, oh, fuck, it was so scary. But I was like, I brought this on myself, all of these scary stories. Yeah, it was fun, though, honestly, even though I was afraid and a lot of people were saying that they wanted you to bring someone else on to do a, I made a up part for it. two. I made up for it. With Just, more scary Justin stuff. Justin came on and I gave him some more scary shit. Yeah. See, I knew that people were going to be mad, though, because you were like, I'm not going to tell this one because of you, Lauren. And I was like, no, tell it. People are going to be – there's going to be a riot with my name on it. And there was. Like the top and comment. And there was. The so, top comment was like – So I was right. Yeah. Yeah, the top comment. I love Lauren, but can you get her off? <laughs> but we need someone who handles the scary stories. <laughs> I understand. But these ones are just as so scary. In a different way. In a different way. Yeah. Probably scarier. Honestly, for a lot of people, I think scarier. Thanksgiving and the holidays in general are a very dramatic, high anxiety, high emotion time. I actually have a story. We'll get we'll get to it when we do holiday woes, like the true Christmas, Hanukkah, mm-hmm. um, holiday stories, but I have not talked to an uncle of mine for three years. Wow. Because of a holiday throwdown. So it's a, it's a very traumatic time for a lot of people. It I completely – me and um, one of my friends were just talking about this. The holidays bring out weird – weirdness. <laughs> it, I mean, they're really Truly. great and they're really fun and they can be really beautiful. But it's like all these different personalities and dynamics and history and and, and just – Everything. Everything. Putting it all together in one room, heightened time, it things can get weird. I didn't want to say it's a melting pot. It's like a it's like a a boiling pot. I don't know. Like it's just it's all of like those different people together. Everyone's different heightened emotions. Everyone's different holiday trauma. Like it's just it's waiting to boil over. Yeah. Well, especially the more the more people the harder it is to maintain because I, yeah. I come from a family of seven kids and it's like there's bound to at least be one person that's upset on Always. the holiday. Always. You, it's just like it's someone the leaves, Someone Somebody leaves crying upset. every year. <laughs> yeah. No, I remember you texted me and you're like, my sister is mad at me. And I was just like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> like, what's happening? I was yeah. like ready to come drive down to the cities and get you. <laughs> but – it's fun though. It's it's a good time. It's a good time. But is it? Is it? Well, let's see. Let's what see. These people say. Let's dive in. Let's go. Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Two Hot Takes. I'm Morgan, and I'm Lauren. So I posted something on Instagram. Just to be like, give me your Thanksgiving horror stories or like hellish Thanksgiving experiences. And we had a lot of people being like, I don't celebrate Thanksgiving. And I'm like, that makes sense because the U.S. is like the only place that really celebrates. Canada has a Thanksgiving as well. I'm not sure what it is, but even the United States definition of Thanksgiving and like the whole story, like Squanto and the Pilgrims, it's not the most accurate. And I just want to like say that up front. Like there's a lot more true history behind the United States version of Thanksgiving. But I think we both look at it as a way to come together with family, friends, and just give thanks for what we all have. I think that's kind of like what we've picked up on. Um, But I just want to say like, if you are listening from another place, 
and you don't celebrate Thanksgiving, essentially we come together, eat a shit ton of food, argue about politics, family drama ensues, and we all go our own ways at the end of the day. Take a shot, bitches. (laughs) I just think it's funny that every year that I used to go to my big family Thanksgivings, we don't do them anymore, but um, I would have the same people asking me, how's how's dance? And I would have to say every single year, it was actually cheerleading and I haven't done that for four years, for five years, (laughs) for six years. (laughs) Like, get it together, uh, people. It's just like, it was just such a song and dance. Like, hey, Lauren. Oh, that's like all the dance? holidays. <laughs> oh, God. And like replace dance with boyfriends. Like, oh, do you have a boyfriend yet? Oh, my God. How is a pretty nice girl like you still single? <laughs> oh, my God. Like, every year I would go back single for the holidays. And my family would be like, are you seeing anyone yet? Are you, are you dating anyone? I'm like, no, I'm like so fucking happy single. Like, you don't understand. Me and my friend Lauren have been like, going to London. We've been going to Thailand. We've been doing all these fun things. I skip out on the holidays a lot. I'm you like, do. yeah, you really do. I was in Hawaii last Christmas. I know, which is probably much better than cold Minnesota. Well, when I lived in Minnesota, I used to come out to California for Christmas. That's so wild. I know. Yeah. You've like done the flip now. <laughs> yeah. Well, these people, let's see how they celebrate. So up first, God, I know how much you love periods. Here we go. Am I the asshole for telling my sister-in-law that she can't sleep at my house for Thanksgiving if she's on her period? My (laughs) (laughs) sister-in-law... What? Thanksgiving brings out the weird, I'm telling you guys. My sister-in-law invited herself to my home to stay for Thanksgiving, but I don't want her sleeping at my home if she's on her period. A few times in the past, she has come to my house and stayed while she has been on her period. Both times, she slept in our guest room and ruined our sheets and mattress pads. It looked like a massacre. To make matters worse, she didn't tell us. We had to find the disgusting sheets in our laundry and find the blood stains on the mattress pad. Not only that, she has left tampon wrappers and bloody tampons in the toilet without flushing and blood on the toilet and inside of the toilet seat. Why is she so messy? I told my husband to say something to his sister, but he was too embarrassed to say anything. I figured I wouldn't say anything because she was moving out of the country and I didn't expect her to visit anymore. Well, she just informed us that she's coming for Thanksgiving, and I informed her that I didn't want her sleeping over if she's on her period because the last few times she's left a nasty mess while on her period, and it was disgusting. She cursed me out and called me a rude bitch and said that's why no one in her family likes me. They only tolerate me because I'm married to her brother. I told her, that's fine, and I'm not tolerating a grown woman staying in my home that can't control and clean up after herself while on her period. I understand having heavy periods, but to leave a mess for everyone to see and to clean up is absolutely disgusting. Should I have just kept quiet or am I the asshole for telling her she can't come if she's on her period? I I mean, that's it, – it's not even just that it's disgusting. It's extremely disrespectful. Yes. However, I will say the way that she presented it to her, she could have been like, hey, you've actually left a mess and it was a lot to clean up and it wasn't very pleasant. So like yeah. I, if you are on your period when, you, when you're here, then – please make sure that you're very mindful because I, I that wasn't fun for me. That would have been a better way to say it. If, to, to tell somebody that you can't come over if you're on your period, that's a weird way to present it. Like, come the, on. The delivery was not good. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, based off the title alone, we were like, oh, what the fuck yeah. is happening here? Yeah. No, I completely agree. Bad delivery. Yeah. Really bad. One, Venmo requests that bitch for new sheets and mattress pad. <laughs> I get everyone has their different sensitivity levels to periods. Case in point, over okay, here. You're talking about a time that you told me of a period bloody bowl <laughs> in a kitchen bowl in the kitchen. Yeah. Just bloody period water. It was bad. I don't want to. I don't want to cook my food and eat next to like blood. Yeah. And <laughs> uterine wall lining tissue shed. Yeah. No. no the uterine lining's fine. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> no, but I mean, I, I love I, eating next to that stuff, though. Mm, yeah. Just the blood. Just add, add a little extra protein, add a little spice. <laughs> gotcha. No, but I, I don't care what other people do on their period. You want a Dixie cup, you want a tampon, you want a pad, use what you want to use. But free bleeding in a bed, like you have to be free bleeding for, to ruin sheets and a mattress pad. Well, I mean, not necessarily. Like she could have, it, 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 sometimes people have it, it that heavy where she had a tampon in and it still just happened. However, she should have notified them and let them know. Or washed just like, it. Or yeah, washed like, it, yeah. done something like that. It, it, the whole thing is just disrespectful. On yeah. A, I've, ruined a, I've ruined a man's sheets on my period before. But that was having sex, and like when you get bopped in the cervix, everything <laughs> bopped. She says bopped. Everything comes out. So that's that's tough. But I've also like been at someone's house, and I had a spray tan, and I I had already showered, but like still they had white sheets and a little bit of my spray tan from like the mm-hmm. sweat and whatever got on their sheets. I immediately like washed the sheets myself to make sure they weren't ruined. And if they would have been ruined, I would have been like, hey. Super sorry, my spray tan fucked up your sheets. Where can I get you new ones? Like, can I order you new ones? Can I give you money? Whatever. So for her to like not only ruin them once on a period, but twice on a period, ma'am. Miss, or, miss, miss, ma'am. Like, sweetie. Maybe, But it might be some medical problem or something. It's a real she, thing. Yeah. She should have just said something is the... She should have. But the, yeah. And also like she's coming from out of the country for Thanksgiving you're not the asshole, but you really just made your Thanksgiving gathering real difficult for yourself. I, yeah. What a bitch, though, to be like, none of my family like you. <laughs> I know. It's like, it's so funny that she comes back. This is why no one likes you. Because <laughs> you're a rude bitch. <laughs> rude bitch. I kind of like that, that combo, rude bitch. I never call anyone that. I'm going to start using that during, like, road rage. You're such a rude bitch. Rude bitch. I kind of like it, too. Ah, uh, top comment on this one. Not the asshole. That's just gross. I was all ready to jump your ass, but I don't blame you one little bit. It's unsanitary and rude for her to do that. Don't flush tampons, people. That was the other thing I was remembering. Don't flush tampons, anyone. Why? You cannot flush tampons. Why? It is bad for septic systems, if you have a septic tank, but even city systems, you cannot flush tampons because a lot of city water gets recycled. Ugh. Yeah. There's okay, an- but the, what, what you're also shitting in there, so they're recycling shit water, so can't they figure it out with a tampon? Watch the Zac Efron documentary about water. It's episode two. They go to Italy. It's magical. Ducks were shitting in this water, and they still recycled it and became drinking water. A lot of water gets recycled. But if you throw tampons in there, it has a hard time going through the grates. There's an episode with Mike Mike. So, something. So do, do most people just, like, wrap it up in toilet paper throw it away? That's what most people do? Really? What do you guys <laughs> do with your tampons? Please tell us. Go to the YouTube. Tell us what you do with your tampons. Weird story. Sorry for the dudes that are listening. But make sure your girlfriends aren't flushing their fucking tampons because it's going to ruin your sewer lines. Is it though? Yes. That's no different than people. Like it doesn't matter what water system you have. If you flush wipes, wet wipes, Mm -hmm. your shit's going to clog. You're going to have a big plumber bill. You can't fuck with that shit. It's a delicate system. Mm -hmm. All those tampons are just going to (laughs) be... On the sides of the pipes. I did not like that sound you made. <laughs> just got to give everyone a visual. <laughs> uh, yeah, comments just, they go off. Overall, not the asshole on this one. I love that I'm in this coaster. I know. My outfit is so funny. I have bat ears on. It's a Halloween pick. <laughs> so up next, am I the asshole for not wanting to do Thanksgiving dinner at my parents without my wife? <laughs> okay I <laughs> where do these people come up with these captions it's how you gotta write to reddit otherwise your post gets removed I 30 male feel stupid for even asking my sister 29 and my wife 34 female 
did not have the best history. Before we met, my wife was my sister's landlady, and she was renting the room at the back of my wife's house six years ago. She got evicted less than four months after moving in because my sister did not pay her rent at all. Then she was taken to court for damages that costed way... Costed. Yeah, OP. (laughs) That cost way more than she put down on the security deposit. My sister did end up having to pay, but basically hated my wife for this. We met after this, all went down, and I went to go pick up my sister's stuff she left behind that my wife was decent enough to not throw out yet. We started chatting and really hit it off. Started dating. Year and a half later, she got pregnant with our son. Now happily married, but my sister never took it well. We weren't as close before all this, but after becoming a traitor in her eyes, we didn't talk much. She hasn't even met my son, who's three. My parents are really trying to push us all to have a family Thanksgiving at their place. My sister never wanted to go because I'd be there with my wife and she didn't want to see me. My parents never pushed it before because they didn't think my sister was being fair considering the issues she has with my wife were all things she did herself. This year they feel different though since my sister broke up with her boyfriend of six years and it's the first holiday without him. She however doesn't want to see my son or wife so that's why they're asking if they be left at home. My wife doesn't have any other family And I don't want her and my son missing out because my sister doesn't want them there. It's not a problem for me to miss out on dinner with my wife so my sister could have the company and I just stay home with my own family. My sister is blowing it out of proportion because she wants me there, but I'm being an asshole because she wants the whole family there. Parents are taking her side here because it's been a difficult year losing her boyfriend and job. So she just wants one family dinner for Thanksgiving. I get it. It's been tough for her. I'm just having a hard time seeing how it's selfish or being inconsiderate to not want to exclude my family. This sister is a major fucking bitch. Huge. Wow. Huge. Woo! To take it out on the three-year-old too? Yeah. Holy shit. What is going on with her? She did it to herself. Exactly. She wasn't paying her rent. What? For four months? (laughs) Yeah. You miss a month, hey, we all go through shit. You're late on a payment, hey, been there. Four months, though, you need to communicate to your landlord and say, hey, like, I can't afford this. I need to move out. This is – I just don't understand what this sister is thinking in her head. How is she rationalizing any of this? I don't get it. I don't know how, like, a bad breakup rationalizes it with the parents, though, too. A six-year relationship is a big chunk of time. It's a big chunk of time. That is a big part of your life, and breakups are really hard. But then to be like, sorry, honey, you can't bring your wife and your three-year-old because your sister's going through a breakup. I mean, I understand that the parents are probably just trying to, like, help somebody who they absolutely love and is in a really bad place because who knows the sister may be on the floor crying every single day in their bathroom and they this is true hearing this so this is true they probably just want they're desperate to like make sure that they can like help her in any way they can if that's like her one wish then the parents are probably like please just like abide by this because you guys are seem to be stable whereas our daughter is not very stable right now i know but then just like <laughs> focus on her like Don't ask someone to then exclude their family. Like, that's his wife. That's his person. Of course. At that point, like... But, like, I'm just thinking about them being desperate to try to, like... Yeah. And that's what she's asking from them. Like, please, like, get him to come for Thanksgiving, not the rest of them. Please, please, please. That's all I want. And the parents are like, can you just, like, do this just one Just, like, compromise. It's it's a couple hours just for dinner. Mm -hmm. I wonder, though, like, just for the fact that OP says, like, my sister and I weren't close before this... And then the fact that I was a traitor in her eyes, we didn't talk much. I feel like it's almost like maybe a little bit of a power trip or no. I don't know. To me, it feels like it's it's a little manipulative. Maybe the sister is um, in love with him and she wants to be like inbred. (laughs) We have seen this before on this podcast. So nothing is out of the question at this point. But I don't know. I – I don't know. I just – it's a messy situation. I think what he's asking, like, 
clearly he's not the asshole if he no. wants to stay home with his family. Um, so what is – he's asking – if he should go to the Thanksgiving and leave his wife and his child or if, or he's saying, am I at the asshole that I don't leave my wife and child? Yeah. He's essentially like, am I the asshole for not wanting to do Thanksgiving dinner at my parents without my wife? Oh, okay. Got it. And so he's like, I'm just having a hard time seeing how it's selfish or being inconsiderate to not want to exclude my family. Yeah. It's his family. It's not. And like, I think a lot of the holidays, I think that's what drives up so many people people's emotions and anxiety around the holidays is because how much pressure we put on them. Mm -hmm. It's like Thanksgiving. It's a time for us all to come together mm -hmm. and like be a family. And it's like, what, why can't you do that on Sunday? Yeah. Why can't, why does it have to be Thanksgiving? Mm -hmm. But is it like, do you use Thanksgiving as like the doorway? Is that like the gateway to get in? And like, it's the perfect excuse of like, Hey, let's come together for Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. Like, it doesn't need to be that much pressure. Like, yeah. enjoy your Thanksgiving and then get together and, like, yeah. try to come to a solution. Because for the sister, like, this is your brother. Yeah. And his wife and his little kiddo are – he's got a kid with this woman now. Like, they're connected. Mm -hmm. She's going to be around. Yeah. And, I mean, our society puts so much pressure on these holidays and having them be so perfect. I mean, you see it absolutely everywhere you go. Um retail movies retail any, like uh, anywhere anywhere you are it's all about how happy and how great of a time it is to be with your family mm -hmm. and for people who don't have always the best situation with their family or even if they do like it's just a lot of pressure that people put on themselves so when it's not perfect then it's very emotional and that's yes. why I think that it's easy like in a big family when you all get together for Christmas if it's not going absolutely perfect for one person they get emotional, then the other person gets emotional because why why are you, you know, why are you acting like this? And so it's it's like a domino effect. But um I do think that you you make a really good point because it's why why this one day? Does yeah. it, why does it need to be this one day where the sister is like, you need to be there, don't want your wife to be there or the kid. I want it to be my perfect Thanksgiving. You yeah. Know? It's interesting. I think it has a lot to do with the pressure we put on ourselves and the holidays. And I just, I just want to add to like with the holidays coming up and I know finances are tough for so many people, especially like this is year two of this fucking pandemic. Do not feel the need to overspend and outspend your means. Like I told my family, like we, my mom used to go above and beyond, like just outspending, putting herself in so much debt to like give us presents because that's something like she didn't feel like she had as a kid. And this year I was like, no, like we are name drawing for people. We're each picking one person. Like it's not that's about – My family has been doing that for a while. I love yeah. that because it's it's not about the gifts. Like the holidays are not about the gifts. They are truly about coming together and just spending time with the people you love. Fucking bake a gingerbread house and like spend quality time. This just became a Christmas movie. That was a great ending, Morgan. Is this a Lifetime I movie? I loved that. Is it a Lifetime movie? God. Heart warmed. Netflix, I'm My heart ready. just grew two times I'm after ready. that comment. Okay, Grinch. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's just, no. I hope the sister-in-law, like, breakups fucking suck. But you also, like, need to get over the past. Like, you were the one that wronged the landlord. And, like, yeah, she lost in court and then had to pay more. But sometimes you just gotta move on yeah I think it's so ridiculous when somebody it, it, there's no question you sign the lease you sign an agreement like it's not like you were like well sorry your boundaries were not clear it's <laughs> no there. like and so it's so wild to me when people are so um stubborn stuck in their own ways on something that's so clearly your fault yeah like you, you agreed to something and you didn't follow through why are you mad about it? Why are you mad at the other person? Be mad at yourself. And I – I 100%. And I get like maybe she was going through a tough situation, but then articulate that. Yeah. And then say, hey, you know what? I know I signed this lease. However, I can't pay. So I, I got to move out. 
you can't like stay somewhere for four months for free. Like you just can't do that. No. Or if you, if you do, it's going to be a different, not a place that you assigned that you're going to pay them each month. Like I'm not saying that I know her situation. She might've been we, going yeah, through a really no bad idea. time. Like it's not necessarily that she was like floating in money and just didn't want to pay because she was being greedy. Like she might've been having a really hard time. But when you sign an agreement to somebody, like those are the rules. Those, those are the expectations. Like you don't just get to like slide past that. Like you have to either – you have to figure it out for yourself. You yeah. can't just like ask for a favor from a completely random person. No. And it sounded like based on the way like this was written, it doesn't sound like she's a landlord and has like a 16 unit place. Mm. It sounds like. Yeah, it's her livelihood too. She has to take care of herself. I know. And it sounded like, and that's like, it's hard because like everyone has this big thing. Like where it's like, fuck landlord lately, like whatever. But OP says she was renting the room at the back of my wife's house. So this could be a way that this like woman offset her mortgage True. and the way that she kept afloat. True. So like, we don't, we don't know, but like, you can't, you can't rob Peter to pay Paul. Like if you can't afford to live somewhere, this is why homelessness is such a big fucking problem. But like you have family, like your family might've helped you. Yeah. It sounds like your parents would have let you like crash in their place yeah. for a bit if you were really that. Yeah. Hopefully they can come together for Thanksgiving. Not the asshole. Not the asshole. Top comment does point out, it's been six years and your sister was at fault. Time to grow up and drop the grudge. I think what's like really the disgusting part of this story for me is that she doesn't want to know her nephew. That's sad. That is the saddest thing ever. And not only that, she doesn't even want her nephew to be at the Thanksgiving dinner. It's disgusting. How can you put blame on a child? A three-year-old. And how could you not want to get to know your nephew? It's disgusting. That is the disgusting part of the story. I'm like, cool, hold a grudge on this woman who was just doing her job and did nothing wrong but expect you to follow through with your commitment. Sure, hold that grudge. The child? It's a little baby. It's a baby. Yeah, that's what I don't get. I don't get like any time people hold shit that their parents did against a child, but like her mom didn't do anything. Or the, the little kids, I think it's a son. His mom didn't do anything. Like it's just like one of those things where it's like, you were wrong. Yeah. You were wrong. And like, it's been six years. Yeah. Your brother married this woman. It's, it's, come on. It's time to get over it. Yeah. Uh, OP does reply to that comment. So they go on to say, first off, uh, time to grow up and drop the grudge. And the fact that she would hold it against your toddler yeah. there we go. is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. If she wants her whole family there, she's, she needs to accept that your wife and child are family, whether she likes it or not. Family doesn't always get along. She needs to deal with that or not expect you there. And so Opie goes, it's how I feel too. My wife was the wronged party and she's over it now. I'm sure because my sister was the one who had to pay out of pocket, she feels differently about it. But still, like you said, it's been six years. Crazy. Yeah, the next person kind of like gets into it and they're like, your parents have clearly babied your sister her whole life if they've allowed this to go on this long. This should have been nipped in the bud years ago. But for some reason, none of you put your foot down with her tantrums. Your responsibility is to your wife and child. End of story. If your parents are going to act this irrationally and bend to your sister's hysterics, it may be time to draw a line in the sand. This is one of those times when taking no side is actually taking a side when one party is so clearly in the wrong. And OP replies, do you have to say something? No, I was just say, remind me how old the sister is. Sister is 29. Yeah. So this happened when she was 23. Mm -hmm. But again, six years, she's now 29. Wife is 34. And so OP replies to that comment and goes, for the past few years, they have told her if she doesn't want to be around my family, then she can be excluded from family events. This is the only time they want to do whatever to make her happy because of what's going on. They're desperate to help her. Yeah, bad breakup. Six years. Like, at six years, I think, I mean, me in my mind, I'm three years into a relationship, and I'm like, okay, I anticipate marrying this person. Yeah. So six years, it's like, that's, especially she's 29. She dated him 23 to 29. Like, yeah. those are such big years where you envision – a future with the person you're with. It's it's like, why are you with that person unless you see a future? So it's a tough breakup, but 
I don't think I would still entertain her being silly. I think I would like try to make a compromise. I think I would say, hey, let's have them stop by for dessert. Maybe we can start patching this up. Like, let's have our Thanksgiving, like as the parents, this is what I would say. Like, let's have our Thanksgiving dinner. Let's have your brother and his wife and kiddo stop by for dessert. They can just stop by 30 minutes, an hour. Let's start like trying to remedy this. Do you really think that this person is rational for the, for that? No. I don't either. But I think I think with people that are so set in their ways, I think you have to give them like baby cues or like almost Jedi mind trick them where it's like you're getting what you want, but also here's an opportunity to maybe get the best of everything. And if she says no, then it's like, okay, well, we're just having Thanksgiving dinner ourselves. But like you could be like, we're going to do what you want. It's just Thanksgiving with the family. <clears throat> but then, hey, let's have your brother stop by. Just just quick. Just dessert. Say hi. You can meet your nephew. We'll call it a day. Because then it's like maybe she feels like she's still getting what she wants, but yet things are going to be better. And, you know, it's tough because some people would say, hey, don't negotiate with the terrorist. So you just got to go with what you think is right. But I, I would try the Jedi mind trick. I really would. Because it can't go on like this forever. Thanksgiving's one holiday. You got a shit ton more to deal with. I think that if I were the family, I would just wait until she kind of gets in a better place, like with the stabilization of the breakup. And True. then I would literally have an intervention and be like, listen, what in the actual fuck? <laughs> it's fucking time, it's you fucking rude time, bitch. fucking time, you rude bitch. Yes. Perfect way to use that. Hell yeah. Yeah. Hopefully they can get it sorted. But OP, not the asshole. No, not at all. You love your family and you love them hard. Also, is this this Thanksgiving that he's talking about? So it's like coming up? Yes. Oh, I wonder what he's going to do. Ah! Let's look at his um, his account. Let's see if he's posted any updates. I'm sure he'll just have Thanksgiving with his family or his, his wife and <laughs> child family. Yeah. So it looks like there's no additional posts, but someone commented, your sister loves to hold a grudge. Stay home. Not the asshole. And he replies back. Yes, we plan to. Mm, so it looks like he's planning on staying home. I do not see any additional posts. However, very, very responsive throughout the comments. So check out the YouTube description for the link if you want to sleuth yourself. Up sleuth. next. Are you ready? What does sleuth mean? Like to be a detective. Is that a word? Or did you make it up? No, I didn't make it up. Sleuth is a word. I'd be impressed if you did. I liked it. No, sleuth. A person who investigates crimes. A detective. Wow. I might not be able to pronounce vague, but I know sleuth. I don't pronounce that word right either. When you were talking, How do you us, say it? I don't know. It's, it comes out different all the time. That's what the thing. And, okay, so you guys, like I've literally been trying to explain this to people. We're from Minnesota. If you're not familiar with Minnesota or the Midwest, some Midwest places mm. call the things that you get from a store, we say bag. Hey, can I get a bag to carry my stuff home in? Hey, can I get a bag? That's a Minnesota thing. And so when I moved to LA, California, I would say bag at the grocery store and they would stop, look at me and say, what? <laughs> what are you asking for? And so I changed my speech and now I say bag. Can I get a bag? My Minnesota people make fun of me for it. My brother says I'm an idiot. But it's now ruined a lot of the other words I say. So instead of saying vague, which is how it should be, I say vag. Vag, vag. I it, literally do that too. And I started doing that right when I moved to California as I well. Know. And I didn't know that that was the correlation, but that is the correlation. That's the correlation. Because I would have people that would always be like, what, what are you saying? Like bag, bag, what? Vague, and vague, vague, bag, bag. I'm like, I don't – now, like, my vowels are confused right now. Is it my, clicking? My brain, yeah. But – and it's funny because, like, I do that too. So, like, like Alejandra, when she was younger, she went by Allie. And, like, I've known Alejandra for 16 – whatever, like, how, so many years Forever. now. And so – I knew her as Allie, so whenever she was like, I want to go by my real name, which is Alejandra, um, I had to, like, program my brain to say, like, 
like Ali means Alejandra. Ali means Alejandra. Ali means Alejandra. Um, because I knew her for one way for so long. So Oh yeah. I so, met her and she put her name in my phone as Ali Nagel. Yeah. But like and so her name is Alejandra. Yeah. And so and I have another really good friend named Allie Krauser. Wait, oops, I should probably shouldn't say her last name. <laughs> she listens. She um, she loves the podcast. But, I think she'd love a shout out. But um I it's funny because now when I'm hanging out with Allie Krauser, I will accidentally call her Alejandra sometimes because I'm so used to like Allie, associating associ- like Allie to Alejandra. So yes. I'm just like, because <laughs> my brain was like, oh, wait, that was wrong. I needed to like readjust. And that's yeah. what was like the bag bag thing. And so now it's like the other like A's sometimes get like We're just too. jumbled. <laughs> We're jumbled. We're, We're so too. jumbled. Also, like, I think it's so annoying to me because pronunciation is so dependent on language and I was thinking about this and I was like, I give people who learn English as their second language so much oh my God, yeah. fucking credit because mm-hmm. look at the word read. R-E-A-D. Yeah. It can be read. It can be read. Like I read that. Yeah, true. How the fuck do you know? So all of it you can people. can be Riyadh. <laughs> Riyadh. Oh, up in the club. Riyadh. Riyadh. I feel like fucking Mr. Worldwide. But all you people judging me for my vague. Maybe you're pronouncing it wrong. I don't even know what it is anymore. Is it bag or bag? Vogue. 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 It's Vogue. It's Vogue. Let's <laughs> let's see. Uh, vague. Oh, fuck. I spelled it wrong. Vague. Vague. It's vague. Wait. Vague. 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 Wait, big. It sounds like they're saying big. I know. That's what I'm thinking. It just sounds like they're saying big. But also, if big. you're British, is it still vague And if you're British? Because, <laughs> oh, the other word I pronounced wrong. God, I'm so tangential today. It's the tequila. Someone was like, oh, you say ruin wrong. It's ru- or I say rune, and it's ruin, like ruin. Ruin? Mm-hmm. You ruined that versus I ruined that. Ruined it. Oh, really? I think I say ruined it too. Ah! Yeah. Yeah. Yes. See, it's the Minnesota. Yeah. So someone goes, do you happen to have any British ancestry? And I go, no fucking way. I just got my 23 and Me back lately and I'm actually British. And they go, we say it ruined over here too. I'm British too. Well, I mean, the people that are listening are from all over the place. We, I know. We know that. So it's hard because. Just love me for me. <laughs> love me. Choose me. You don't watch Grey's Anatomy, do you? Mm -mm. (laughs) Yeah, that one was lost on you, but... I thought you were just having a a meltdown. I was just (laughs) waiting for it to stop. (laughs) Yeah, let's uh, let's take a break and go uh, (laughs) make you a new drink. (laughs) We're done with the pronunciation tangent. When we come back, it'll be a story. I liked that part of the podcast. I think we need to clarify for people because we are Midwest gals. We, got, we just got to set the record straight. Well, the Canadian that I told you about, it's so funny because he always says, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> and I can't. I can't Can I get like, a Coke? I a can't Coke? not repeat him every time he says, sorry. sorry. It's, just, it's too hard not to. I love Canada. Will someone from Canada adopt me? Okay. So up next, do you want me to tell you the overall vote before or after? Um, don't you always tell me after? I do, but ugh, So okay. why do you want me to tell why do you want to like what's going on right now? It's staring me in the face and I just don't want to keep it to myself. I feel like you're angry. It must be the person's the asshole. Clearly. Maybe okay, I'll pick a new story first. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Okay, so here we go. Am I the asshole? For clearly, not- clearly you're the asshole. We already know that based off of Morgan's reaction. <laughs> Am I the asshole for not wanting a Christmas tree up at my mother-in-law's house on Thanksgiving? The holidays are very special and sensitive for me. 34 female. This year more than ever. My brother and I were recently orphaned, having lost our mother to breast cancer over 20 years ago and now our father to septicemia in 2020. I'm trying to navigate how I'm going to manage the holidays without my parents and I'm a new parent myself. So I want to establish some nice family traditions with my son, one and a half, that we will be able to continue. I love this time of year so much. I really want it to be special for my son. I agreed to have Thanksgiving dinner this year at my mother-in-law's house and my brother, 
who is traveling 900 miles to visit, is okay with going over there. But as we're confirming the plans, my mother-in-law says I'm putting up my Christmas tree tomorrow, and maybe my son would like to help put up ornaments. This sent me completely over the edge. This is my reasoning. One, Thanksgiving is one of my favorite holidays, and I would prefer the two holidays be clearly split and defined. I can't. I, it's so annoying to me when people are so weird about that. Put your fucking Christmas tree up when you want. I'm sorry. If I want it to be Christmas for four fucking months, I'll have it be Christmas for four months. And that's that. We can still do Thanksgiving, but Christmas. Also, it's just a fucking tree. It's like just a pretty thing to look at. Why do you only want to look at it for a month? Exactly. You put so much work into it. You put so much work into it. Enjoy it. My Christmas tree at my mom's house in Minnesota was up until March last year. I, yeah, I also, (laughs) no, honestly. It was up so long. I think that lights should stay on, like Christmas lights outside, as long as it's cold. Let's go. And as long as it stays dark early. Because daylight savings is a bitch. Because I honestly, I'm like, it gets dark earlier so that Christmas lights can be on longer. There we go. So why would we take it off just because Christmas is over? Hanukkah lights. Us Jews can have some fun too. Put your little dreidel blow up thing outside. Let's go. True. Kwanzaa. I'm, I'm sure everyone's about, got the lights. I'm talking about lights in general. And I also- Put the lights up. No, that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. put your fucking lights up. And I, this is only point one. She's not even done. Okay. We got, we got, we got six points. Oh, no. Two. I want to get a tree of our own and be able to enjoy the awe and wonder of the event with my son for the first time. Three. I can't get the Christmas tree that I would like before Thanksgiving, so I can preempt the situation. Four. Christmas is full of mixed emotions for me. It's also my birthday. So I've had, so I've always had to manage some feelings of neglect and lack of control. Five, my parents passed right before and right after Christmas. I would have hoped to get through Thanksgiving without being bombarded with all these feelings. I don't know if my brother will have a similar emotional response. Six, putting up a Christmas tree two weeks before Thanksgiving is not a long-standing family tradition in my mother-in-law's household. I told my husband that I didn't really want to go to mother-in-law's house for Thanksgiving if there was going to be a Christmas tree up, and instead of putting the time into listening to me and at least trying to understand why, he proceeded to immediately phone her and tell her I refused to come to her house if there was a Christmas tree up. And she said, that's weird, and he said it was because I wanted to do it first. She's now not going to put up a Christmas tree. I'm not happy. I'm so confused. You just got what you wanted, but okay. So she's now not going to put up a Christmas tree. I'm not happy. He didn't take the time to even attempt to understand my feelings or explain my side of things to her. I don't usually dictate what others do in their homes, but I believe I should be able to have some minor input into the experiences this year at mother-in-law's especially where my son is involved. My husband thinks I'm selfish for wanting to have the experience of putting up a tree and seeing my son's reaction first. He thinks that I just want to be in conflict with his mother, and I should have just let it go. While I feel he ruined the holiday season for me, before it's even begun, he believes that if anyone ruined the holidays, it's me. Now, I don't want to go to her house for Thanksgiving or Christmas or ever, Oh my God. I will because I understood, probably more than most, the value of family, but I'm feeling misunderstood and ganged up on. Am I the asshole? So I actually do think that her points, there, I understood some of her points. Like she's yeah. saying that it's a very triggering time for her for all these different reasons. Um, I, I also think that it is a bummer that her husband didn't maybe if when she presented it that he didn't just like fully get in the conversation before just immediately being like I'm calling my mom and telling her like basically that you're a bitch. <laughs> um, yeah, he really threw her he, under yeah, the bus. Yeah, he really did. That's so, what I was gonna say too. He threw he kind of threw her under the bus there. Yeah. Um. However, it you know, it is. It's not. I mean. It's not her house. It's just not her house. And like this, she wants to have a Christmas tree up. I I don't know. I just, I think that it's weird for her to 
refuse I don't know. Or dictate? Dictate. Yeah, exactly. I think it's weird for her to dictate that situation and and say that I don't want a Christmas tree to be up. It would make sense to me if she was like, honestly, it's kind of triggering for me. It's kind of hard on me. Like, this is just how I feel. But for her to be like, so she better not have that Christmas tree up. <laughs> it's just kind of Yeah. Weird. It's a lot. It is a lot. And I don't know how far apart they live from each other, but – I have oh, – there's just this – there. this story is a lot to unpack. After point one, I was like, fuck this lady. And then we get to point number six, and I'm like, okay, I have a little more empathy. Like, yeah. I see – I do see where she's coming from. Like, it's hard, though, because, like, loss is loss. You never truly get over loss. You just kind of learn how to grow with it. Mm -hmm. And so even though she lost her mom 20 years ago – if she lost her mom right before Christmas, like every time Christmas was around, that's that's going to be a reminder of her losing her mom. Yeah. So I get it. It is very triggering. So mm -hmm. her saying she wants to separate the two holidays, it's like, please just let me have this one holiday that yeah. I, I remedy with happiness. It's, yeah. it's Thanksgiving. It's this one holiday I had with my mom and then I lost my mom, you know, the next month. So I get it. I think I have a problem with, I guess her husband not really understanding her, but I also think like this can't be a one-off. You married this man. There has to have been more situations where this man has shown you he doesn't understand you and your experiences because if you've been married now for however long and you have a, a one-and-a-half-year-old with this man, mm. like he should understand your past. He should understand your trauma and be able to right. – be able to empathize with mm -hmm. that. So for him to just be like, she's not coming if you put up a fucking tree. Yeah. And then like throw her under the bus that way. So I'm like, you married this man. Yeah. Who doesn't like respect you. And I don't want to like, I don't even know if you would consider this like blaming her or like whatever. But it just seems like there is so much disconnect between every single person in this story. Every single person. Mm -hmm. Like, the husband is wrong for going to his mom and throwing his wife under the bus, who should be his partner. He's wrong for not trying to understand his wife. The wife is wrong for trying to gatekeep a fucking Christmas tree and dictate what other people do in their house. But also, they're both wrong for not understanding her trauma and her experience. So it's like, the overall vote on this one was asshole, which is what I was, like, trying to, like, I was like, oh, I was just, like, twiddling my thumbs, like, so excited. But now that I'm in it, I feel like it's not asshole. I feel like it's almost more of like an everyone sucks here. Yeah. Like there, there's no winners. There's no losers because as long as there's this disconnect, you're all losing. No one's going to be happy. I think that – I think it's a little bit – her reasoning with the triggering of the holiday and just wanting to keep it separate and just having Thanksgiving be Thanksgiving, um, you know, that's – that's fair for her to want that, but also, like, it's also something where she needs to realize that other people are involved and it can't just, like, yeah. revolve around her. Um, I think it's a little bit selfish that she is so worried about being the first one to show her son, like, this exact experience that she's trying to tell someone else in a different household not to have a tree. You know what I mean? Like That's so true because even if she wants – which she did put in her points, I can't get a tree that I would like before Thanksgiving so I can preempt the situation. Mm -hmm. And in point number two, she goes, I want to get a tree of our own to be able to enjoy the awe and wonder of the event with my son for the first time. So you almost wonder if it is more about that experience with her baby and the mm -hmm. tree versus being more about the family. That is interesting because then it's like, I guess you could make a point where it's like, it doesn't matter whose house it is. You're still going to be witnessing your son have that right. experience for the first time. Right. It's interesting. Well, I also, I know, um, I met this young mother once who said that she was not going to tell her kids that Santa Claus existed ever. Oh, um, interesting. Yeah. Because she wanted to be the one to give the presents to her children and have them be grateful to her and not to an ima an, a, a, a magical fairy character. Yeah. yeah. I've also heard 
like to that point exactly. Um, it's very, very discouraging if you are a person of wealth to tell your kids like, oh, hey, Santa brought you the dirt bike. Hey, Santa brought you the most expensive gift. Mm. While it might be more exciting for your kids, they're like, oh my God, Santa brought me this big present. If your kids go back and tell kids that don't school, have as I never much. I thought about that. Yeah, so it was this wow. thing where it was like, if you want to, you know, have Santa be this person in your kid's life and have this experience for your kids, let Santa give your kids gifts, but let Santa give your kids gifts that everyone could afford. Mm -hmm. Because going back to school and having... It makes so much sense. Hey, Santa brought me a fucking pony. And it's like, these Damn, kids, Santa doesn't like me. I was so good all year. What the fuck? That's exactly what <laughs> yeah. it is. And so it makes these other kids that like don't have as much or, you know, these families that aren't as privileged... It just makes everyone feel bad. So it's like, sense. own up. Like, if you're getting your kids fucking bougie gifts and that's something you want to do, do it. But, like, say you got the gifts. Like, say you got the gifts. Because it just – it just uh, – Makes sense. Yeah. I never thought was, about that. I know. It was really interesting. I just read it recently. It was like, uh, holidays are coming up. Like, let's mm -hmm. be better this year. Like, and it's to each their own. Like, obviously, if you want to tell your kids Santa brought him a fucking pony, you can do that. But – I think it just like it levels the playing field and like there's so much disadvantage and lack of privilege and whatever. So make everyone feel good. But this lady, I'm perplexed. The kid experiencing Christmas with the grandma for the first time, the tree. I love trees. Like I, I celebrate Hanukkah. I celebrate Christmas. I kind of do it all. Um, my mom, when we went back to Minnesota for uh, Halloween this year, we, uh, she was like, do you want to put up our tree? And I was like, yeah, let's go. Let's do it. Let's get it up. So we were going to put up our tree for Halloween. So, I mean, yeah, I, I have a hard time like kind of rationalizing, like it's never, it's never too early for the tree. Mm -hmm. Any last thoughts on this one? Um, no, just that her husband needs to chill out before calling because the what she said is that she called he called his mother immediately. Yeah. And I think he needs to chill out a little bit too, even if he thinks she's being irrational. I think that wasn't very nice that he didn't let her explain her triggers, even if he still thought that it was unfair because it is in my opinion also unfair. So, I like I like your agreement with everyone sucks. <laughs> I really think you're you're right on with that. I think he didn't give her a chance to like really talk at all. He immediately was like, I hear no. Let me call my mom. Mm -hmm. And, I was and like, it was clearly bitter. Yeah. Sorry, mom. My wife's a bitch. That's, <laughs> like, that's, that's literally what he did. Yeah. That's what he said. And the thing is like when you – when you, I've said this a, t a time and time again because they come up with like these stories so much. But it's like when you marry someone, that's your person. That's your ally. That's your – where you should – be aligned. Yeah. And so for him to like just call his mom like, mom, <laughs> mom, she doesn't want the tree. Like, buddy, talk to your fucking wife. I feel like I've done that before. Like I, I can't think of a specific situation. Not <laughs> And not not like with like the person I'm with and yeah. my, you know, mom or dad. But I feel like I've done that before where it's just a very angry like well, actually, no, it's not going to work because so and so doesn't want this. Like, <laughs> it's a passive aggressive like response. Passive. And I, I can't like to try of... to get the way that you want. <laughs> I've been there. Just, we've just, like, we've all been there. Yeah, I, I can't think of like a like a situation, but like you telling me the story, I'm like, I feel like I've done that before, like once before. I'm sure we all have. <laughs> I don't even want to read the comments on this one because I think a lot of people. It's hard because loss is loss and we all deal with losses and we all have our unique losses. But like being an orphan, like this girl lost her dad the last holiday season, 2020. So it's like being f parentless on the holidays is very, very tough. Like my dad has told me it's like one of the hardest things he's dealt with. And I think a lot of the comments kind of miss that and don't really have a lot of empathy for her. Yeah. But top comment. You're the asshole for gatekeeping Christmas. Go to any department store right now and you will see trees. Are you not going to take your kid to the store? Make your tree special for him in your own way. 
but don't kill everyone else's spirit. Which I see their point. But also, like, what happens in department stores is not what happens (laughs) in people's lives. So just kind of, like, everyone needs to have better communication and, like, a little bit of empathy in this Well, you know what's interesting, too, that we did not touch on is that – she mentioned that her birthday is – is it actually on Christmas or she, is it just around Christmas? She said Christmas. She doesn't specify when. Um, let me read it again just to make sure. Well, regardless, the reason why I think that's interesting is because I used to not – Christmas is full of mixed emotions for me. It's also my birthday. Right. Yeah. So, so- – I, and I used to not think much about zodiacs at all, honestly, and and birthdays and that having like a a part in a person and their personality. I just used to plug my ears when my friends would talk about it. And then um, somebody was telling me about the book The Outliers and how all these different things birth with people month, and their birthdays. Birth month affects everything. Even if you don't believe in zodiacs, exactly. Like, he talks about how birth month and yeah affects and everything because like especially, I mean, depending on where you're from, but I know at least where we're from, people put a lot of focus on what day you're born. It's a constant reminder. Anything you're filling out, wherever you go somewhere, it's your birthday. Like you go to the airport, you know, your birthday. Your every Everything is Birthdays like... Birthdays define us. It, yeah, like every single year, what are you doing for your birthday? Like that's like who you are. That's like what makes you special. That's your one holiday is your birthday. And so there's so much focus as a society around that, that we identify with that so much. And so, for example, growing up year after year, I never thought anything about the fact that not that I had a summer birthday. So nobody decorated my locker growing up. I never brought cupcakes to school. I never got celebrated from my entire class. Yeah, you had a summer birthday. My summer birthday. And mm-hmm. I didn't think that that would impact me. But the thing is, is that all these t- type of things impact us as, they as do. we're growing up year after year and they impact us in who we are today. Like that's why as a society, I think a lot of us have realized our childhood traumas and using trauma is not just like traumatic, but like trauma means just basically experiences that have impacted you when you were young to the point that you are today. (laughs) Yeah. And it's, so that's why it's interesting because I do think that birthdays really do play a part on our personality. So hearing this story, and that was one of her points is that like her birthday is on Christmas and that, yeah, I don't know. It's all just so interesting to me, but Uh, no, and I, I do see where you're going with that because it's like, that's her birthday. And it's also the time of year her parents are now both gone. Mm-hmm. So it's like it's this There's like – There's a lot of triggers. It's a lot of triggers. And like I have a friend, like one of my best guy friends, his birthday is the 26th. Uh, Tanner is 26. And it's like Tanner really never really had a birthday because it's like Christmas is 25th. His mm-hmm. birthday is the 26th. It's like – it just like it's all smooshed together. Yeah. So it definitely would shape you even growing up. Because it's like it's not – you can't really separate it. Like that's your birthday. And so if her birthday's on actual Christmas, it's like that's just a whole – whole shit clusterfuck of feelings. Like there's there's no good way to get around that. Did she just become not an asshole? (laughs) I think – I think Reddit might have uh, given her a bad vote in my book. I know people might come for me for that one, but (laughs) – I just I have a lot of empathy. I I I know loss is really tough to deal with. I just think it's not necessarily yeah, okay, maybe she's gatekeeping the tree whatever, but like she should have been the one overall my opinion, everyone sucks. She should have been the one to text her mother-in-law. Like you've been married now, you have a one and a half year old. Text your mother-in-law and say, "Hey, I get you want to put up the tree. However, this is like a very triggering time of the year for me based on losing both of my parents. Would you hold off on the tree? Like, can we just have Thanksgiving? Like, she's an adult. Text your mother-in-law. Reach out. Because if you can't do that, like, how old is she? Did she say how old she is? She did, right? She's 34. Text your mother-in-law. Your husband doesn't have to be the middleman. 
He tried to be. He clearly fucking sucks at it and threw you under the bus. So I vote everyone sucks here, but like, God. I'm sure the mother-in-law would have empathized with her. You know what I'm just realizing too? You know, I said, I was like, I feel like I've done something like this before too. Yeah. I actually just, I think what I'm thinking of is that I had an ex do that to me where I explained that I oh, damn. didn't know if I wanted to do X, Y, Z with his friends because of X, Y, Z. And I was just kind of like, I don't really know how I feel about this. And anyway, like they called him and he picked up the phone. He was like, Lauren doesn't want to go. Lo doesn't want to go. And I was like, don't do that. I was like, I was talking it through with you. Like, God damn it. Well, and that's the thing. Now we're just going to think I'm a fucking bitch. And that's the thing. You're a rude bitch. No. <laughs> You're a rude bitch. Rude bitch. And that's the thing. If you want these people to be in your lives, and like clearly they're married, they're going to be in each other's mm -hmm. lives, you don't talk shit about them. You don't throw them under the bus. Yeah, okay, you could vent. Venting is healthy and normal. Agreed. This was so preemptive. Yeah. Like, you don't even know what sh she's feeling. Yeah, like she could have gotten all of her feelings out, and he could have been like, thank you for explaining that. I do think that, you know, the tree is still very special to my mother and I don't want to hold her back from that. But I also want to be supportive of you and like and find a, another way to support you while still not like affecting like my mother's plan. That's exactly how it should have been. And she could have been like, oh, my God, you're the best husband ever. I'm obsessed with you. Let's have sex. <laughs> That's how it could have been. Could Buddy. have been like that, guys. <laughs> Buddy, you missed out on a good Thanksgiving blowjob. Uh, oh, I'm bored of this one. Let's go to the next one. <laughs> next. <laughs> okay. <laughs> up next am I the asshole for not wanting to invite my mother's home health aide to Thanksgiving I'm 38 female and my mother is 70 female she's been suffering ongoing health issues for some time and has lupus I live out of state and currently can't relocate although I visit her as much as possible she has a home health aide 22 female I've met the aide on a handful of occasions and she's lovely my mother always waxes lyrical about her. That said, my sister and I don't know her all that well. I always host Thanksgiving, and it's usually a big thing, so I start planning months in advance. I am admittedly a type A, lol. My mom called and asked me if I could invite the aide, because the aide doesn't have any family, she's a single mother, and is estranged from her parents. I'm extremely sympathetic to the aide situation, but I'm hesitant to invite her because I don't know her. I mentioned that concern to my sister. We often have differing opinions on stuff like this. And she told me that if mom says, it goes. And that otherwise, this girl who worked to help our mom so much would be alone on Thanksgiving. I now feel like a bit of an asshole, but I feel like it could potentially be awkward for her because she won't know anyone except my mom. And it will almost be like she's working on Thanksgiving when she could be having a Friendsgiving or spending time with her baby son. Am I the asshole? Edit, she would either have to bring her three-year-old son or get a babysitter. As I live out of state, she would also have to spend the weekend and stay overnight. That's it. That's all the context. Where's the mom staying, though? That's My first question is, where's your mom staying? I mean, if they have room for her. Let's go. I don't, I, I mean, I guess my thought with the holidays is a situation like that if the person wants to come, open arms. I agree. If she feels like she's going to be working on the holiday and doesn't want to come, that's great. But, like, if you invite her because she has nowhere else to go, open arms. I don't know. I agree. Also, I mean, I know it's a weird time, though, like, right now because of COVID, you know, COVID yeah. and stuff. But – I mean, if she's taking care of the mother, like, I think that's... It's fair game. She's Yeah. Like, yeah. That's probably who they're... I agree. And I look at it, I don't know how much assistance her mom really needs, but I look at it as your mom isn't going to get to where you live by herself. Who's driving her there? Who's going to take care of her while she's there? Can it be you? Because if it can't be you, then does she need the caregiver? Mm -hmm. So, also, she said baby, but, like, her baby son, but, like, a three-year-old isn't a baby. Like, three-year-olds are fun. They're mobile little people. <laughs> they talk. Like, they're just – they're fun. So, it's not necessarily a baby. Three-year-olds are fucking 
the shit. They are they're not so fun. Just... <laughs> they're so fucking fun. So I look they at really it. They are, honestly. They're so fun. Like, I, I want to, like, skip the ones and twos. Like, give me a three Really? Log. When people say terrible twos, I'm like, I love two to four. No, two to five-year-olds. Give me the three-year-old. They're hilarious because they're just, like, little people that, like, learn how to, like, they're like drunk Do people things. Yeah. So I love weird. the saying where they're like, oh, they're like drunk adults. Like <laughs> they just do whatever they want. But yeah, I think um, overall vote on this one was asshole. I'm an asshole. I look at my family's experience with caregivers, like my grandma. Like I live in my grandma's house. Like this podcast studio was my grandma's house. Like this is my grandma's place. And so before my grandma died, she had three amazing caregivers. They got invited everywhere. Yeah. They were family. Like, my dad still talks to them. Yeah. And we also have another family member, like, family friend that we consider family because my family is just inclusive as fuck. Um, Judy, who – Judy has a caregiver. Judy's caregiver comes to Passover, Seder dinner, Hanukkah dinner. Like, her caregiver comes to everything because she's just, like, an extension of Judy. Like, she's family at this point. Right. So, I mean, just, like – you don't have to be weird. Like, this isn't, like, this isn't the help. Yeah, so I think that's the issue is that she is just so frustrated because it's not going completely according to plan. And she's yeah. so type A that she's like, I I can't make this work. I can't be flexible. I can't be nimble. It's the holidays. It's the holidays. Roll. We're supposed to love. Roll the punches. That's what we Stole need to do. Stole the words right out of my fucking <laughs> mouth. Cheers to that. Nope. Not fist sorry, my drink. Sorry. Cheers, you goofball. <laughs> Holy shit. Oh, well, I wasn't holding my drink, and it just felt like really in the moment I wanted to just keep it going. Roll with the punches. Holiday season is all and about rolling. And it was rolling. a punch. So I feel like it went with the, the theme. It did. Um, Yeah. I don't know. I think I think as a culture, as a society, as a world with the holidays, we need to start setting a different precedence and and start to really just focus in on the fact that the holidays really are just a time to take a step back, to not be moving so fast, to just enjoy the moment and accept and no, and not judge and love and just really take this moment to be inclusive yeah and I think that move past past grievances and just start the year anew well that's why I think it's funny because like the movie The Grinch it's just like Cindy Lou Who was on to something that she little really bitch was knew. she knew like there's so <laughs> much noise going around the holidays that people get so stressed out and so like on edge and it causes fights and everyone wants it to be perfect when it's not then they're upset and they put so much work into it and it's not panning out exactly how they wanted it's just like all this stuff where it's like chaos think about Cindy Lou Who it's just about love or Buddy the Elf Christmas spirit so top comment on this one you would be the asshole if you can't create a holiday environment where she feels welcome and not on the clock that's your problem to deal with Super ironic that on the holiday dedicated to giving thanks for all you have, you wouldn't want to extend an invitation to the woman who cares for your mother. So true. Yeah. Drops Mike. Next comment is along the same lines. She cares for your mother and sustains her during her life. She deals with the accompanied hardships and obstacles. Caring for an elder is quite hard. I think it'll be courteous of you to invite her. She will find out that you held a Thanksgiving dinner either way. The evidence might be a familiar photos or hearing it from your mom. And it'll be uncanny and awkward not to invite her. You raise some concerns pertain to her wanting to be with her son or with friends. But those can be prevented upon a polite declining. I think you have an ulterior motive. You don't see her as a part of the family and don't want her to appear in pictures or intervene in your conversations with family members. So can I interject right there? Because that is exactly what I was thinking about. It That's what gets me with this story is that she doesn't just say, honestly, it makes me uncomfortable. I don't want her to be there. I want her to just be family and I don't know her and I feel like social anxiety with people I don't know. She's not making it about herself. She's projecting 
these other things onto this person that she has no idea about. Well, you know what? She might feel like she's going to be working. Mm -hmm. And I don't want her to feel like she's going to be working on Thanksgiving. And also, she probably wants to, like, be with some other people, like a Friendsgiving. That would probably be more comfortable for her. No. Like, what? That is not – an excuse. No. Just own up to your shit. If you feel really uncomfortable by it, like, at least say that. At least say that. Don't make it about other people and assuming – their intentions their desires like don't assume for other people like speak for yourself and go from there I agree yeah I think it's her probably being embarrassed that she doesn't want her mom's caregiver to be there and like being like oh who are you how do you know the family oh I'm I'm so-and-so's caregiver like it's probably embarrassment trying to portray this image but yeah I think it's, it's a lot of like assumptions like you said like extend the invitation I think with a lot of these stories, like this next one that I might read, it's extend the invitation. And if the person doesn't want to come or feels overwhelmed, it's up to them. them. But at least you extended the invitation. Your conscience is clear. You feel good. You did your part. Well, yeah. And you can always also just say like, hey, I I completely understand if you have other things going on that you would rather do. Um, but if you don't, for whatever reason, just want to welcome you to our experience. Like, yeah, it doesn't, you don't, you don't have to be like, Hey, come to my party, please. Like it can just, it it can be be casual. It can be very casual. Like, Hey, like if you have other things to do, like no pressure at all. You don't want to make it a pity invite, but yeah. Saying like, Hey, no pressure. We'd love to have you please come. But if you have other things. Totally get it. Get it. But still make them feel included. Exactly. Which is our next story. Should I, 33 male, invite my son, 18 male, to Thanksgiving? It hasn't been that long since we started talking. Oh, my God. I'm so drunk. I can't even read. Wait, hold up. (laughs) (laughs) It gets Um, hard to read as you get drunker. Yeah, as like the – three-hour podcast slash goes on. Oh, my God. Um, But wait. So he's 33. His son is 18. So what, he had him at 15? Is that the right math? Wait. I'm pretty sure it's 15. I'm just going to trust myself. Okay. Pretty sure it's 15. Yeah, yeah. 18 plus 15 is what? 18 plus 15? 33. Yeah, yeah. It's... God, this is pathetic how long it takes us to do this math. I got it right the first time. Yeah, you're good. You're good. Super good. All right. So he had him at 15. So young, 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 young father. It hasn't been that long since we started trying to be a part of each other's lives. I went into detail in previous posts about my history. He was kept from me, and I was never told about him. My ex's parents, his grandparents, lied about me walking out on him after my ex passed away, and we know the truth now. The thing is, he's cut them out of his life for the lies, and he has no other family except his aunt, my ex's sister. But she had to travel out of the country for some family troubles on her husband's side, and she most likely won't be here in time. Basically, my son won't have anyone to spend it with, on top of already having such a rough few months with everything. And I mean, I want to invite him so we can finally meet my parents and siblings and everyone else in my family. I'm just not sure if it's too soon or if I'd be making him feel pressured to say yes. Given our history, is it too soon to invite him to a holiday family gathering? No. So he does goes to say, edit. So sorry to those who commented before. I wanted to reply, but for some reason I couldn't view my comments. Irrelevant. But... You said what? No. I agree. Absolutely not. I don't think it's ever too soon. No. And what does he mean given their history? Um, Probably just the fact that he was hidden and his grandparents probably created this narrative. She's like, like, why waste any more time? That is my thought. And that's what I viewed on this other one where it was like – it was a similar situation for the story that was on my dad's episode where it was like, the mom and the baby mama lied to him and said, he's not yours. He's not yours. So this kid grew up thinking his stepdad was his real dad. Stepdad found out he wasn't his and abandoned him. 
Mm. And I'm like, what's the point of wasting any more time? Your kid is already so hurt. Yeah. Just try to make the best out of whatever situation you yeah. have. Life is short. Life is life is so so short. Do not waste any time. I just agreed. Invite him. Agreed. Absolutely invite him. No hesitation. And 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 again with the whole like pressure of not making someone feel like they have to say yes to something they don't like. No, people will find a way to say no if they don't want to. They'll come up with whatever excuse. My car died. I got towed. I'm sick. If people don't want to be there, they won't show up. Yeah. So don't worry about what pressure they're going to feel. Exactly. Like, Just open arms, invite. And if they say no, that's fine. Exactly. I completely agree. Top comment. Yes, yes, a million times yes. Whenever you see an opportunity to get closer – to form a bond, et cetera, take it. Unless he specified otherwise, mm -hmm. go for it. Also, how old – do? did he say how old he was when he found out about his son? No, but it sounds like super recent. It hasn't been long since we started trying to be a part of each other's lives. So who knows what that means. Yeah. He said you can go look at his post history, which – God, it's so crazy how guys can just like have a child and not know. Like, imagine if you had a baby. Like, obviously, it doesn't work like this. But, like, imagine if you had a baby at 15 years old and you just found out right now. At 27? Yeah. Like, someone was just like, no, you have a child. Like, you have an offspring. Yeah, your world would be shook. And you and you had no idea for all these years that you have a child. Your world it's would be. It's just so crazy that it works like that. Your world would be shook. Yeah, so going back on his – original post he posted on this account for the first time four months ago the title of the post was my son 18 male mother's family poisoned him against me he thinks i 33 male abandoned him judging by the age i'm guessing you all know how young i was in my life when he was born his mom my ex were best friends since we were in kindergarten she was the love of my life we were together from fifth grade up until our sophomore year. Her family just made us stop having contact. They moved and everything. For the longest time, I wondered why, but now I know my answer. Beginning of June, I was sent a text from an unknown number. You don't know me, but... And after a long message, he tells me he's my son. And wanted me to know he graduated from high school, got accepted into college, no thanks to me. He just wanted me to know that he managed to do it without his deadbeat father. I have my cell on my Facebook page and stuff, so he probably got it from there. So part of me was thinking he had to be a prank, but he mentioned my ex. I had to call him and ask to meet up. He at least agreed. I was nervous meeting him, but he seemed to hate me. It was very emotional for me because I saw so much of my ex in him and also some me, and I never had a clue. My ex passed when he was two. Wow. Her parents told him I wanted no involvement in his life, but I was never even told of his existence. I absolutely would have been around if I had known I got her pregnant. He didn't believe me, and he thinks I'm just trying to cover my ass. That's not it, but he seems to think so. They went so far as to tell him I broke up with her when she told me and wanted nothing to do with him as a way to convince him he doesn't need a dad like me in his life. My son left the park where we met, still not believing me. He was really upset. What stung the most was the hate on his face. The way he was looking like I'm the biggest piece of shit on the planet. I'm crushed. I told him I want to know more about him, be in his life, and I absolutely would have if I had have known. He doesn't seem to want anything to do with me. They've said too much against me. How do I get him to see I'm telling the truth? I'm heartbroken over this. Never wanted him to think he was unwanted his whole life. Is there any way to convince him I don't know anything about him? Or what do I do to navigate this with him? That's insane. To invite him to Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. Why, why do you think that the grandparents did that? Um, I think it has a lot. Uh, this, is a, this is me like assuming a lot. But I look at what my mom went through when she got pregnant, when she wasn't married 
And I think for a lot of Christian households, um, super, super Christian households at least, they they think it's better to move away and say their daughter's husband died or like there's they just don't want to admit the shame. It's a lot of shame. My daughter was having sex without being married. Like I saw another thing recently where it was on TikTok and this girl got pregnant with her boyfriend at 15 and both of their parents forced them to marry. And that was something that they could do within their state. And so she got married at 15. Wow. Had a baby. They split up. But it was like it was so embarrassing for her parents where they either – they threatened her, you either get married or we're moving. And so it feels like that vibe where it's like Damn. they're just embarrassed. They're embarrassed that their daughter got pregnant outside of wedlock, outside of being married. and So sad. And I've heard of a lot of stories too where a lot of people have okay. like kids – and then they get raised as their sibling. Say I would have gotten pregnant in high school. Yeah. My mom would have then raised my child as right. her as baby. your sister. Yeah. yeah. Wow. It's just – it's embarrassment. It's these social constructs that convince people and, and this is what they need to do and whatever. That is super sad. I just like – I can't imagine I, – I, I'm trying to think – if there was something that he did that was so devastating to the parents of the daughter who had the child, um, so the grandparents. Having sex with her in high <laughs> yeah, school. Yeah, I guess. But at I'm 15. Like, but I'm just like, how, how do you, how do My you My mom not, wanted to kill me when I was having sex at that age. How do you not want to tell this innocent little child about their father? How do you want to t tell them all these lies how do you want to tell them that their father didn't give a fuck about them and that they literally left the mom because like you, how do you get off saying they're all evil. these lies to this like innocent kid like it's just they're evil it's awful i don't understand that i don't I just, it makes no sense there are a couple other posts from op um i'll be sure to post the link to his account and all of these posts on the youtube description but it's pretty complex. I, it would be a deep dive in itself of probably an hour because there are a couple of posts to like go through. But one of the posts that I think is super positive, like to end it on because it got a little heavy, but the title of this post is, um, and it was the original one where I was like reading my 18 year old son was poisoned against me. That was four months ago. And one month ago he wrote, the title is, my 18-year-old son called me dad for the first time. So I think it does get better. Aww. And he just says, like, we're slowly starting to get to know each other after he spent his whole life being lied to that I wanted nothing to do with him. Um, and so it does get better. My heart feels like it wants to burst. I just Aww. wanted to share this. Don't think I've cried this much from happiness. I'm going to cry. <laughs> it's so sweet. It is. It's It's – it's truly amazing. So it's not too soon. I I truly hold this in my heart. I believe this in most circumstances at least. It's never too early to invite family to things, especially important life events. Life is short. Um, I'm going through some family shit where I haven't shared it. I don't even know if I want to share this episode. I'm going to start crying. Um, but I found out a family member has cancer and – it's just, it's fucked. Life is too short. Life is too short to not invite people you want to have relationships with to important events. So good. And hold grudges. Why hold grudges? Uh, just everyone needs to just embrace the future and be happy. It's just, it's hard. It's hard. <sighs> Love your landlord, even if they evict you. <laughs> Love your father, even if your family lied to you that he abandoned you. Just, just love people. <laughs> yes, this is the the season of. What love. other summaries do we got? <laughs> I don't know. These stories were quite chaotic. It was a lot. I told Morgan was like, "What should the theme be?" And I, pff, I'm not creative. I looked over at my friend and go, "What should the theme be?" And she goes, "Thanksgiving." And I was like, "That's kind of brilliant." Since here we go, it will be released on Thanksgiving. So. Um, Shoe fits with this one. <laughs> but no, I think 
this was a fun episode because we also talked about a lot of different dynamics. It's not just Thanksgiving-y. But yeah. A lot of dynamics. Any final notes? Do you have any final notes for the show? Um... I'm trying to think of like the cheesiest thing I could say. <laughs> <laughs> I think I got a, all of the cheesy comments uh, throughout did, the episode. Did you so. though? Did you though? Did I though? Did you though? No, but offline I'll probably be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just um, have the happiest, healthiest Thanksgiving you can have. I avoid politics because at least in the States it's always miserable bringing up. Um, which is sad, but avoid politics and just embrace the family. I mean, whatever your family is, friends giving, family giving, whatever you want it to be. And just don't take it too seriously. That too. And if you are alone on Thanksgiving, we are here for you. Mm -hmm. Reach out to us, to Hot Takes. Um, Justin brought up the fact he'd love to do like a holiday fundraiser. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to come up with like a way to do like a holiday GoFundMe type thing so we can like support people in need during the holidays. So we don't – we want everyone to be happy and healthy during the holidays. So whatever that looks like for you and your family, just don't feel like you're the asshole for setting boundaries and doing what is going to keep you the most sane and happy and healthy because holidays are fucking rough, you guys. But that being said – they're beautifully rough. <laughs> <laughs> let's coin let's coin that term. They're beautifully rough. Let's coin, that term. Hold on. let's coin that term just the way that we did rude bitch. Rude bitch. Beautifully rough. Love it. It's gonna be on a t-shirt al- along with the moron stamp. At the end of the day, I'm I'm building a graphic in my head right now. I see it, I see it all. <sighs> At the end of the day. I think we've only said it twice this episode, right? I don't think we said it at all. I said it once at the beginning. And if someone hears more than twice, Lauren might have been two. But I think we've gotten better. I can't uh, I can't say the same for like because I'm an idiot. But <laughs> what? I say like a lot. I know. It's, it's, it's uh, my filler word. It's my comfort word. I, it's really hard, I think, to not have a filler word language is hard you guys vague 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 sorry sorry Sorry, guys it's really hard sorry guys (laughs) but uh until next time until next time bye guys bye